I know nothing. Even in our Monday meeting, I'm like, Kyle, I don't want to know a damn thing about what you think about this game. Uh, we are all in the complete dark. So, Kyle, in those immortal words, how is The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom? Ben, it's f***ing fantastic. Yeah! It's so goddamn good. We did it! We did it, everybody! <laughs> okay, all right. That's no, I loved it. I, I, I continue to love it. I uh, continue to just play it obsessively. Yeah. Obsessively. Okay, because I remember yeah. I went back not too long ago and looked at like our review discussion back on the Game Informer show for Breath of the Wild, a game that you gave a 10. Yeah. But I, I remember being like, Kyle should have been screaming more about this. Um, do you have that same feeling is it comparable to breath of the wild where are you at overall yeah i mean so the thing i actually i did actually I, you've said that to me well a, a few times over the years and i went back watch that video too yeah. and i think i i agree with you is that i was like underselling it because i was right. i was so nervous about like i didn't know how anyone was going to react to that game other than knowing my own opinion which is like i this is like one of the best things i've ever played in my life and yeah. i was just like it was almost like nervous to put that foot forward so tears of the kingdom like is so great uh, but but it is an iteration on breath of the wild right yeah. like they ch they changed a ton like there's it like the way you interact with hyrule like feels a lot different um in a lot of ways but i i will say it doesn't which i, I kind of suspected going into it it doesn't have that same like this is going to change everything kind of impact that breath of the wild had when you sort of made you know you were like i don't know 10 or 20 hours into breath of the wild you're like this is incredible and this is going right. to make waves in the industry tears of the kingdom i had like different like really just effusive and wonderful emotions while i was playing but it doesn't feel like the the the, the bomb that's going to leave behind this like crater of you know, ingenuity in the game industry does that, does that make sense it, like it, it does like you're yeah. still exploring hyrule and it's like well i i and Hyrule is like changed dramatically. It's not that you're like, it doesn't really feel like a retread at all, um, but it is a familiar location. So you, it, it doesn't quite hit you the same way as Breath of the Wild did, but it's, it's so great. And it really has you approach this world, you know, in a, in a completely new way with new tools. And then there's like all these other levels to it as well. Like we know about the sky and how you interact with that changes, even with how you interact with things on the ground. And sort of the caves uh, change things a lot as well. And, yeah. And how you move around and stuff like that is different too. Yeah, that was an interesting thing. They kind of have, um, you know, the Awada ass, but technically they're not calling it Awada ass. They've been rolling that out over the last couple of days of like finally some interviews with these developers, which is nice. They're pretty breezy and light. Believe it or not, Nintendo isn't bringing the hard hitting questions to <laughs> other Nintendo employees. But like it, there is interesting bits in there and specifically them really focusing on like oh the, the caves are a much bigger deal maybe than we think and then also confirming in there that yes there are dungeons everybody uh in this yes. game but okay that's i guess my big question for you is like do you feel like we understand what this game is um, from the actually, outside to, to to a certain de degree uh, maybe and the big thing is ultra hand like if if breath if going into breath if breath of the wild sort of like lasting impact was like wow what a what an interesting and new way to do open world exploration this is going to change things like i think ultra hand is going to be tears of the kingdoms legacy and i was really sort of scared of ultra hand like going into it i was it was like is this too versatile like am i going to be frustrated by how many options i have this is for and building by the way the, building the vehicles and all that stuff yeah, it's and I mean, it's really just simplified. It's like sticking things together is what it comes down to. And like how you use that to solve puzzles is done in such a way where like you don't have to go too die. You don't have to dive too incredibly deep into it where like you can solve. It really like opens up like how you can solve puzzles in really interesting ways without having you spend too much time on any one like project. Anything you build doesn't take too long. And then it's just super satisfying to be like, oh, I built this thing and that helped me solve this puzzle. I can't believe that worked. But then if you want to dive deeper, like you can go crazy with it and you can build crazy contraptions. Like there's been a couple instances of me trying to get from point A to point B in the game. Yeah. With like a, a vehicle that I created where I did sit down. And I was like, you know, I'm going to spend a lot of time on this. I'm going to make it cool. I'm going to make it go really far and really fast. And that is just it's so much fun to like put something together and see it work. And one of the th like things about it is like they're not there's not really templates but like the game kind of knows what you're trying to make most of the time right so like if you put four wheels on a platform 
it like you don't have to connect like your steering wheel to those wheels it, it just right. works like that's all it takes four wheels and a steering wheel on a platform and you have a vehicle that can drive and then and like that and that extends to like like everything right like any kind of like item or vehicle you're making the game is like we kind of have like a decent idea of what you're going for here so we're going to make it really easy for you but you still get the joy of connecting things and putting it together that that's nice because i know it, you know last time we talked about the podcast you were like i don't want to build anything i don't want to use my big dumb brain Honestly, mm-hmm. yeah and, and the takeaway is don't be scared yeah absolutely don't be scared and you will feel like a genius like this this more so than breath of the wild i think made me feel super smart when i figured out how to attach a f- to a f- to f- and it's just like Ooh. it's just yeah and it, it happens all the time like just walking around you'll find so many instances of like oh i should build something here because they've taken away runes from the first game so like a a great example that like they showed in um uh, the Anuma like detailing how it works is yeah. like, oh, you need to cross this river. In Breath of the Wild, you would have been like, well, I'll just use my ice cubes, right? And maybe there's a couple other things you might have tried, but you you found these tools that you leaned on. But here, it's like, well, I don't have ice cubes anymore, so I need to figure out some other way to do this. And maybe that involves Ultra Hand. Maybe that involves any number of other things I can do. Right. And that extends for the whole game where it's like, this is familiar. I've dealt with this before, but now I have to figure out how to approach it from a new way. And that's fun. Like figuring out the new ways to do it is satisfying in a different way. Yeah. I, I'm very interested in that. Like, you know, the comparison of everybody bringing up like, oh, it's the same land as Breath of the Wild. And, you know, everybody on YouTube, oh, it looks like DLC, looks like DLC, all that, all that <laughs> nonsense. It's interesting, like in that Awada ass style thing that's on Nintendo's site, um, the tech director was talking about kind of the mentality of like remixing a world like they're doing here instead of starting fresh for the the sequel to Breath of the Wild. And he said that he kept thinking of when he worked on Wii Sports Resort, how Miyamoto came to him and they were talking about Wii Sports Resort. And it's like, no, it's the same same location, obviously Woohoo Island, but we're remixing everything on top of that. So yeah. like, that's such a weird idea. I never would have thought of Wii Sports Resort as the tech director's comparison for how they're approaching Tears of the Kingdom. I mean, I, I think it really does benefit quite a bit from being the Hyrule I know. And the, I have no insight into this. I it, Maybe it's not. But, like, there are some instances, especially with Ascend, the yeah. item that lets you travel through any roof, where uh, the way they sort of change the world and remix things, I'm like, I think this might have been harder than if they just started from scratch. <laughs> like, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, to, to, to change the things that they have and the way you move through them and, like, things... Like, Ascend, like, kind of blows my mind how versatile that thing is and how well it works, where I'm like, th- I understand why this game took so long. Just based on Ascend alone, just being able to travel through any, <laughs> like, ceiling is nuts. I don't get it. I mean, we saw the little cave where he jumps through, but, like, what what's going to break our brain beyond that? I mean, it's just it's just like the way you might scale a mountain using Ascend or like how you might solve a puzzle using Ascend or like the fact that you can go into caves. And how does that factor in what you would use Ascend for to come up in different parts of the map and things like that? Right. Weird. Like there's so many times where I've been like, I don't know how to get up there. I don't, and then you're like, oh, right. Ascend. And then, you know, and then it like it just works. And it's like, oh, my God, I can't believe that worked. I wanted to ask a question on behalf of the um, Breath of the Wild naysayers because I was not. I didn't love the game. Sorry. Sorry to bring that energy to this chat. It's okay. <laughs> Don't make I it sound like a bomb I understand that some people ball. hate <laughs> having fun and be excited by well, new experiences. No, I'm just well, I, I will say I was really hype about the Tears of the Kingdom trailer because um, it looked really fun. Um, but what you're describing and what my ultimate issue with Breath of the Wild was is that it didn't really feel like a Zelda game. It did in in the skin of it and the language of it, but in the actual gameplay of it did not feel like the things that I love about the Zelda franchise. And what you're describing kind of sounds similar where it does sound really fun, um, but it doesn't sound like a Zelda game. I'm wondering, can you speak to all about, can you assuage any of my fears? (laughs) Right. I mean, this is, (laughs) I don't know if everybody knows this. This is a sequel to Breath of the Wild. So it, it, it hews closer to Breath of the Wild. So like, if Breath of the Wild was something that didn't connect with you, I, I don't know that this is going to change your mind. I will say, without going into too much many spoilers, I think the dungeons uh, are like twenty percent closer to what you might think of as like a traditional dungeon. Whoa, whoa, if that makes sense. That's like it's not. 
that's is that a, shocking. Is that a huge spoiler, Ben? I'm no, sorry. no, no, not a spoiler. This is shocking. I, I mean, from everything, you know, that they said, which I guess has been very, very little, I was under the impression yeah. that it was like game on. So they had the quote saying, this time the dungeons are huge and each carry their own regional look and feel, just like traditional The Legend of Zelda games. We think they will provide a satisfying challenge for players. They certainly were a challenge to develop, laughs in parentheses. Um, so <laughs> my impression from reading that was just like game on. Zelda lovers, no, here just, you go. They are, they're simplified in a way that I'm, I, I say positively, right? They're like, they're in the, the last game, they, I think people struggled with the fact that you had to sort of, you know, uh, move the, the beasts to kind of solve them. This, it's a little bit easier. Easier is not the right word. It's just like, it's easier to understand. It's just like you understand the goals of the dungeon and they are more diverse and that extends to the bosses. I like the bosses way more here than I did in Breath of the Wild. Okay, that's nice. It, I but, like how you approach them. I like how they look. I think they're a big step up. Are it, the solutions to puzzles in the dungeon a little more free form like the rest of the game or do they have kind of the classic Zelda one solution model? At, I, everything is free form, man. Like, it, like with... Ultra hand, it's like crazy yes. the amount of different things you can do. I mean, like, yeah, I, I don't even want to give any like solutions, but there are just it's it's so frequent where it's like, will that work? Oh my god, that worked. Like that was like that was constant through the whole game with everything, I love right? It. Like Ultra Hand in particular, but even uh recall was another instance where it's like, I don't know if that's gonna work. And then you try it and you're like, Oh, that absolutely works. And it and it was really quick and easy and it worked really well. Right. Uh, by the way, I love having Jenna and Leo on for this episode because you two, not to make you mortal enemies or ejected rivals, as we like to say <laughs> on the Min-Max show, but you are complete opposite ends of the spectrum for like Jenna loving Zelda and Leo. Leo just wants full on physics immersive sim, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like if I, you, I definitely like Breath of the Wild for it not being much like the old Zeldas, you know? Right, right. right. Like if you could create your own character, if you could press a button and just like strip out all Zelda callbacks and music, you'd hit that button. <laughs> I make it Agent Forty Seven. <laughs> Everybody's dream, yeah. I mean, what I know about you, Leo, is like I think I think you will really appreciate Ultra Hand and for what it can do. Even if you're just like, just if you're approaching it and you're like, ah, whatever, I'll deal with dungeons and shrines on my own time. But like, just using Ultra Hand to like jump around between the sky islands, like I th I think you're really gonna have a good time with that. Yeah, this has been super encouraging for that. And and yeah, the the arc you've had where you were worried about like not feeling like you could be creative if they just give you all these tools and set you free and having you come around on it like this is super encouraging and I really hope that is how it goes for a lot of people. I hope it gets more people asking what more games can I try stuff and feel smart in and then I get to say Hitman. <laughs> I get to say it. And Kyle gets to if plug. If you love Tears of the Kingdom play Hitman. That's such mm -hmm. a pitch. Well I do think <laughs> like Kyle it's weird that you're playing Nuts and Bolts right now on Game Informer's <laughs> Twitch channel right for that super replay like does yeah. it feel night and day to nuts and bolts just for ease of building these things? I mean, so I I, to, I have played nuts and bolts in my life. Marcus, oh, Marcus Stewart, Stewart is the one who has his hands on the controller. Okay. So like I'm watching him play with a, my limited experience of like what it was in the past. But the, the big thing for me that differentiates this from something like nuts and bolts and even other games that have tried like creation tools like this which is such as a Nintendo thing and especially like a new era of Zelda thing. Well, not even a new era, but just a Nintendo thing is like they are so concerned with like how you personally are interacting with this tool, if that makes sense, right? You're, it does not feel like you're going into a menu. It feels like Link is picking things up and sticking them together to make a contraption. Right? I want like, like an and animation. That's, and that's why it is so much more successful than Nuts and Bolts to me is because yeah. even though Nuts and Bolts, it, it like revisiting recently it is really cool to like uh finagle and remix uh, vehicles and build new things to help you solve uh like 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 get to the end of the get to the end of this race and it's like oh well let me add a bunch of like tires and stuff like that you're going into a menu and you're playing around with grids and you're moving things over slightly yeah, yeah. where with this i truly feel like i am picking up objects and sticking them together with my hands just by the nature of like how it's designed and how it controls because you're not entering a menu you're just picking things up and rotating them and sticking them together. And it it works really well. The controls take a little bit getting used to. Okay. But it was really like probably with like before I even left the tutorial area, I was like, I feel like I have a great handle on this. But I, I I feel like every 
power you use in this game should be combined with an animation just of Link going like, I don't know. Like that, it's just the feeling <laughs> like, I don't know, just yeah. cram this Crossing stuff his fingers with his off <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's something I love too, is like when I make something that looks like utter crap. Yeah. And I'm like, we'll see how this goes. And then it like works and you're like, oh my God, this looks terrible. But it's, but it works and I'm getting to where I'm trying to go. It's amazing. How big of things can you make? Like we saw his weird like, tower of doom that he's driving around with the stupid little hand in the trailer can you just keep building at a certain point i assume there's some limit right i i haven't pushed the boundaries of that what? limit yeah i well I, i'm not that's like not i'm not really interested in like well i hope really someone down. on the I internet does the kyle you had to but, finish um, the game yeah. <laughs> in a week <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh i mean it does seem pretty like I, I have never, I haven't run into anything where it was like, you, you know, you know, you can't add any more things. There was one little really? mission I had that was like, hey, I need you to collect logs for me, and it's like not, not the brand bundle of branches that you generate when you hit a log enough for it to collapse into. I, I need you to pick up logs and carry them to me. And so, like the what I ended up doing was like, I just can, I cut down like eight trees and I bundled each of those giant logs into one big bundle of eight and then just tossed it down the cliff to him. <laughs> and like that worked. Like I could, I put together all those, those, those big giant logs together and it was like fine. And it didn't give me any, it didn't say like, oh no, this is too much. But there has, there has to be a limit. <laughs> I'm sure it's somewhere. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Um, it's weird, Kyle, suspicious, dare I say. You haven't mentioned Fuse once. Which seemed like that was going to be the big kind of mind blower here. Yeah, no, I like Fuse a lot, but Fuse is more like is is it ends up being a very practical thing because like for weapons, I just like end up fusing all the weapons, right? Like rather, oh, there's two swords on the ground. I only have one sword slot. Okay, I'm going to pick up that sword and fuse it to the other sword, and now the sword I have is twice as strong and twice as long. And then <laughs> weird using it for um like your bow and arrow, you just find I found like a handful of things I really liked like bombs and and the eyeballs and like fire fruits and stuff like that like it, it it rewards your experimentation and it's but it's 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 not the game changer that ultra hand is it's 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 kind it's almost like a quality of life update because it it means that like everything you pick up becomes a lot more valuable like everything every huh. plant every fruit everything because like in the past it was like well i can use this to cook and that's interesting but now you can use it to cook and then you could also attach an acorn to your shield and see what that does. And sometimes you get really interesting stuff. Sometimes you just get like a couple extra hit points. Yeah, that is really exciting because one of my biggest gripes with Breath of the Wild was, I mean, the breakable weapons, like I'm not opposed to as a rule, but it, I just didn't see how it made the gameplay interesting and it made everything I picked up kind of boring. But the idea that there's more to do with it now, there's more to do with each breakable weapon and use it more smartly is really compelling. Yeah, I think I think the big thing about Fuse is it does just make everything more valuable, right? Hmm. Like like and things like I the big thing I would do is I would just like fuse shields together all the time. So I would just have like double shields and stuff like that. And it just means that like everything you pick up can can serve some purpose uh, beyond just cooking, uh, which is nice. Yeah. All right, Kyle, uh, spoiler free rapid fires for you. Better okay. or worse than Breath of the Wild on these criteria <clears throat> and the criteria are thus uh music uh m more more music <laughs> yeah okay and so better in that sense better worse more okay yeah. interesting <laughs> i mean that was a th i was like you know i guess I, uh, one complaint i heard about breath of the Wild, which i think was fair was like there's not a lot of music which is yeah. cool because then you get the kind of lonely quiet exploration but zelda's a series that's known for great music so it was a little bit of a bummer to like not have as many tracks but uh, there's a lot more, and I and I like them. Okay. Uh, discoveries slash exploration. You know, just that sense of like, what yeah. the hell? I it, it's it's it feels mean to say worse, but I think Breath of the Wild, yeah. just by the nature of being the first one to do it that way, was more exciting and more interesting. Okay. Uh, puzzles. A uh, better because of Ultra Hand. Ooh, interesting. Um, are there shrines? Yes. Okay. It's are basically there shrines. Yes. Oh. Are they better or worse than Breath of the Wild? I like them better. Okay. Nice. Interesting. Uh, combat I'll overall. tell you why if you want to know. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Uh, a lot of the combat shrines take all your equipment and you have to start from zero at the beginning of the combat shrine. So it's less about what you're taking into it 
because sometimes you could like in Breath of the Wild, you might encounter a, a really hard combat shrine. And it's like, well, I just don't have the tools to deal with this. Where a lot of the combat shrines here are like, we're actually going to start you from zero and give you a selection of tools. And then the puzzle is figuring out how to get through the combat shrine with the tools we give you. And then you That's got like awesome. stuff back at the end. Yeah, I love that. That sounds cool. Uh, combat overall, about the same? Uh, yeah, that that one's same. Okay. Yeah, it, they didn't do any radical changes or anything like that. Like Fuse is maybe the biggest change because your collection of weapons are different and like and weirdly often longer <laughs> all my weapons are like longer for some reason just by the Perfect. nature of fuse <laughs> weird uh story uh, uh better better yeah it's surprising n- 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 not really okay. it doesn't it doesn't go too far out of what we understand from a typical zelda story but i like the early conceit and uh i like the broader you know Zelda timeline stuff that becomes okay. as a result. Yeah, I guess the biggie too. I hit on how's this thing run? It runs good. It runs well. There are a couple instances the the because it does a consistent thirty, and then the times where it does hiccup a little bit are mostly just lots of enemies on screen. Like there okay. weren't there aren't really locations, which is was a problem with Breath of the Wild. Is like right. you would go to certain places and the and the frame rate would kind of hitch. Here it was more just like if there were a lot of enemies on screen. Uh, one one way I would I would describe it is like there are, like Pokemon is a good recent example where you play games on Switch and you're like Ugh, I I really want that Switch upgrade. I, yep. We're just overdue at this point. I did not feel that way with Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, that's great. It felt like it was running fine. It felt like it was running well. You know, I didn't I didn't feel like it was missing something. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think that that's huge here. Jenna, how you feeling? Hmm. Yep. Okay. I mean, I'm gonna get it and I'm gonna play it, and I hope I like it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Is it possible? But you like... want more traditional, sort of like linear Zelda, which I love too, by the way. To be clear, I um, I don't know if, if you know this about me, Jenna, but I love Zelda. Huge Zelda fan. Favorite game series of all time. And is it just that Breath of the Wild kind of made you pine for something more, uh, what like traditional? I guess you could say. I mean, I, I think I think the indie game market has really done a good job of kind of picking up the slack like there there's so many games that like death's door i think is one that is Hmm. like or tunic like these very very definitely like old school zelda inspired games so like i'm not missing that per se i i'm just like yeah i'm the same way where it's just like zelda is one of my favorite franchises of all time and it makes me sad that i don't enjoy the new games uh because i feel it does feel like an, an old friend that you're kind of diverging from <laughs> right, <laughs> and right, you're like, yeah. you still get excited when you see their name or you see their face, but you know that that, that spark's gone. That's how I feel about it. So, yeah, yeah. I think it may, maybe if you not, because it, it, it is, it, if you approach it, knowing that maybe it's like, this is, we're on a different trajectory with Zelda and this is right. maybe even like considered like a different game. Maybe that'd be I'm a way hoping- to get more out of it. Yeah, I'm hoping I'll have a clean slate because I, I also just went into Breath of the I went into Breath of the Wild with this chip on my shoulder uh, and I didn't enjoy it for a lot of reasons not having to do with the Zelda thing in general. I have just general complaints about how the game functions uh, as a game. I saw you wince uh, with breakable weapons, so I, I get it. I can't. <laughs> Ugh, I yeah, hated yeah, the yeah. breakable weapon system more than I can possibly express to you. <laughs> Uh, and and like I appreciate why the game had to have it because the game had to incentivize you going out and exploring and having more encounters. So that, right. but like forcing me, I just the the combat relies on you knowing how each of the different weapons moves and interacts, and then it fucking breaks them on you. Can I curse? You can, but uh, it's bleeped out. So go nuts. It's, funny, it, it, it's more work for Hanson. So that's <laughs> well, right now <laughs> it is. So if you're so mad at him, it's stuff like that. I thought the world. I thought. I thought Breath of the Wild had the same amount of content as a normal Zelda game, but spread out over more time and more distance. And I, I found that really frustrating. That's interesting. But I'm hoping I'm going into Tears of the Kingdom with a more reasonable expectations. And right. and I'm I I have space in my heart to love it. We'll see. <laughs> it just has you, to step you, up. You there this is a weird thing to not that I need to sell you on the game. Jen, if you don't like it, that's fine. <laughs> like I, I'm not gonna be heartbroken. I'm open. But, yeah. It, it, like in the, if if you felt like things were too spread out, one thing about, nice thing about Tears of the Kingdom is it does afford more opportunities to get from point A to B, B faster in certain Excited ways, in, in ways mm. that I won't explain. Yeah. But uh, it's also worthwhile to just walk everywhere too because there's so much new stuff to see. 
Yeah. That like sometimes you're doing yourself a disservice by taking the faster routes. But mm. but maybe that would make make a little more um, palatable for you. Uh, uh, Kyle? Kyle? Yes. Um Sky Stuff cool? Sky stuff cool. <laughs> All right. Okay. I like it. Yeah, the sky stuff is great. Yeah, I really like it. It's 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 super fun to see an island in the distance and be like I think I need to go over there. How do I get over there? And then right. figuring that out is super fun. Oh, I think God. I need to do some sky stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Uh, look, this is Game Informers review. Check out their site. I, su- I assume you get a whole whole bunch of content going up about this game. But uh, what, uh, what, yeah. what number, hypothetically, would you put on this review score over there, Game Informer? So I, I gave it a 975 out of 10. <laughs> I, I did consider, Why I did think the about the 10. Like it was okay. definitely something I, I talked about with uh, Brian Shea over there who, you know, is, is ostensibly the reviews editor at Game Informer. And like the only, not the only, but like the main, the, the reason I didn't quite go full 10 is because like Breath of the Wild was like, even when I was playing, I was like, there's just this undeniable impact here. This this is going to just change things. And there's just yeah. this, this magic to this game that is, is going to be difficult to recreate and it and it is difficult to recreate but like there's just it, so that's that's the thing it just yep, didn't yep. it lacks maybe like the newness of that of that first time that i just was like understood the the how big breath of the wild was and um this this succeeds everywhere there's like i i love tears of the kingdom but it, it doesn't it's like a mario galaxy to mario galaxy 2 situation mm. where like mm-hmm. i think in like 10 years when we're talking about wow you know zelda with that big change i think we're still going to refer to breath of the wild as the sort of you know, the line in the sand where things change for the series. But Tears of the Kingdom is so good. It's such a great game. Okay, really what, what do you think? Is, like, a year from now, will there be a... <laughs> predict the future. Will there be a sizable component of Zelda fans who are like, Tears of the Kingdom, you guys, is so much better than Breath of the Wild? Or do you think everyone, by and large, is going to be understood that Breath of the Wild is the quote-unquote better game? Is it going to be Majora's to Ocarina level of like, all right, Majora's people, I hear you, but let's be realistic here. The, the no offense to the Majora's Mask people. Yeah, out I mean there. the the difference between Ocarina and Majora's is more substantial than it is for Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. I think it's going to come down to like the exploration versus Ultra Hand. I think the huh. big thing for the big discussion point for Tears of the Kingdom is just going to be Ultra Hand and <laughs> how so that changed weird. the game and what you do with it. Something... And we all have to get used to referring to Ultra Hand as a very serious design. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, I think is very cool. Yeah, I mean, I think we kind of hit it at the top, but that's I'm still fascinated with the idea of like your biggest surprise of playing it and going like, oh, it's more this than I expected. And the answer is just filled with hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. In, in, in more ways than one. Mm, in more ways than one. We'll revisit that in a few weeks. But um, yeah, like we're, yeah, Breath of the Wild is, is exploration and discovering things. And yeah. Tears of the Kingdom is like, how can you be creative within this world? I think. Okay. The it's discovery is within the, you. Oh exactly. my god. Yeah. You discover yourself. Uh hey, hats off to Kyle for reviewing this game. Yay. Kyle, come on. <laughs> you you played a lot of this thing. You crammed a lot in for this discussion. I, I, yeah. I I I also want to make clear because I know this is a point of discussion lately like I I did have a moved up deadline for my print review like mm. the, before the online embargo, but like sure. My my insistence on like losing a lot of sleep and l- genuinely like stopping exercising <laughs> like while I was playing Breath of the, uh, of the Kingdom was self directed. I just loved it so much yeah. that I didn't want to stop. And like you know, for Game Informers, like if I needed to push the review back, we totally would have. It would have been fine. Yeah. But I was just like, no, no, no. I I love this. I want to play this. I want to ignore every other part of my life. <laughs> just <laughs> dive into this game literally in many instances. And I'm still it, like playing it constantly like yeah. anytime it's like game time it's it's straight to tears of the kingdom i i, I want to try to get all, everything you know i want to try to see everything the game has to offer i have not seen that yet yeah yeah i i really adore it i i love this game i love it uh speaking of diving into this game uh as we mentioned last week i do believe uh we are taking the deepest dive into tears of the kingdom which is our whole multi-part game club series at min max here uh you can unlock the podcast version of all of those discussions by supporting us on patreon support independent games media and pff, you get a wonderful podcast waiting in your favorite podcast app we appreciate it and then if you support us at any tier whatsoever um, any tier of the kingdom, Leo Vader. 
No. Oh, okay. Any tier whatsoever, uh, you can jump in and uh, you can submit comments for us to read during our discussion for the deepest dive on Tears of the Kingdom. And then also you can join the Discord, which really is where the heart of this discussion is going to be happening. That Discord channel is going to be so fun with everybody sharing their thoughts and uh, creations and all that fun stuff. Yeah, Clips, you're going to want to tell people about stuff you do, probably. <laughs> right, and your friends will be like, I got it, I got it, I got it. But that Discord channel, you can let her rip. Just a Gatling gun of ideas and thoughts. Uh, but thank you, everybody, for supporting the Deepest Dive format. Hope you enjoy it. It'll be up on our YouTube channel on... I guess uh, Tuesday next week and then in that bonus podcast feed as well on Tuesday of next week. So we're collecting your comments on Sunday, May 14th. I saw at least one person be like, that's so early. We only have a couple days. I hear you. Just whatever you play, you can submit a comment on Sunday. But I'd imagine you're going to be playing more than a couple hours. I'd imagine you will at least will have one thought in those couple of hours. And so <laughs> this is what we're going to be tackling. Nah, just blank slate. <laughs> <laughs> Take it or leave it. Um, but the weird thing is this is a different type of deepest dive. Normally it's like, all right, get up to, you know, Jenna, uh, chapter six in Resident Evil four. That was, it's a very clear stopping point previously. Right. Uh, whereas this one, it's like, we want you to explore. I want you to have fun. So primarily we're going to be focused on kind of systems, that type of thing. But Kyle, we were talking ahead of time about the best way to phrase this. And for the first discussion, we're going to focus on steering towards the quote unquote phenomenon objective in the northwest that's the correct way to phrase it yeah i had to do the the north the cardinal directions in my head okay like, yes, that way northwest so there might be some sort of objective in the northwest go towards there and we're going to be focusing no way, primarily no, on that uh for the deepest dive but if you want to if you want to go your own way you can go your own way, um, and then you could write in about whatever the hell you want. Just don't spoil the ending or whatever, you know. But if you want to be like, "Oh, I found this crazy thing over here," that's fine. So it's going to be kind of a loose, loose and goosey deepest dive. But thanks everybody for uh, enjoying it. And for the first episode, it's going to be uh, myself, Kelsey Lewin, uh, Leo Vader, and Jeff Marquiafava uh, for the first discussion. But I think it's going to be kind of a looser cast. We'll probably rotate through, get Kyle in at a certain point, and all that fun yeah, I'll stuff. Yeah, pop in for some of the later ones. Sweet. Uh, and then also we'll be streaming uh, Tears of the Kingdom on Friday on Twitch if you want to follow us. Uh, Twitch.tv slash MinMax Show. My old, uh, old best friend Ronnie is going to be jumping over to the studio and we're going to start this game up uh, fresh so you can enjoy that over there on Twitch. If you thought, hey, this video wasn't bad, well, there's a whole lot more like it on MinMax's YouTube channel. Please help us out by subscribing to our channel and checking out the MinMax Show podcast, also available on your favorite podcast app, the best, most thorough discussion about games on the internet with the deepest dive, our monthly community trivia show with prizes called Trivia Tower, and a whole lot more. Thanks so much for your support, everybody. All you gotta do is click that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it.